What's up guys, my name is Brandon, welcome to Quick Flicks. Today, we are going over Quarantine, directed by John Eric Dowdle in 2008. Fun fact, this is a side-by-side -side remake of the Spanish hit Wreck, which I'll be covering soon after this film. In the midst of all this coronavirus stuff going on, I thought this would be fitting for our situations. So, let's jump into the movie, and don't forget, wash your hands people. The movie opens up with our main character of the film, Angela Vidal, a news reporter assigned to spend her night with the Los Angeles fire crew, with her cameraman Scott. We follow them to the station where they get a tour with the fire chief. The chief introduces our main characters and us viewers to the two firefighters we'll be following for the night, Fletcher and Jake. We then go through more touring, interviews, and competitions with Angela and the crew. Later into the night, the fire crew gets a call, Angela and Scott following along. They arrive to an apartment complex where a supposed woman was screaming like murder upstairs. Our crew merges with two cops, James and Danny, and go upstairs to see what the problem is. They knock on the door of the room but to no avail. Jake punches the door open with his nifty little sledgehammer. They are greeted with a very ill looking woman, Mrs. Espinoza. She seems to be hyperventilating and overall looks very sick. As James turns his back to her for a split second, she attacks and bites him on the neck, making everyone panic. Fletcher detains her, and the rest of the crew scrambles downstairs to get James help. When they get to the front doors, they realize they're locked in. Fortunately, there's a veterinarian who lives in the apartment complex, Lawrence, who tends to James. Jake and Danny attempt to find a way out the back when Fletcher falls from the bedroom upstairs. He's severely injured, but not dead. Jake rushes the vet over to help. Danny and Jake then rush upstairs to find Mrs. Espinoza, demanding Angela and Scott to stay downstairs. Ignoring his commands, Angela and Scott go upstairs soon after them. They go back to Mrs. Espinoza's room and find the maid of the complex running for her life, but shortly falling down and dying after. That was weird. Jake and Danny hear the commotion and rush back to the room. Mrs. Espinoza returns shortly as well, with blood pouring down her mouth and her chest. She charges at the group and Danny puts her down with three gunshots. Moving along with the night, Jake, Angela, and Scott go to each room to alert the residents of the situation and to get them to go downstairs. One of the residents, however, is very sick and vomiting all over the place. They help her downstairs. Once they get back down to the lobby, they finally have access to the back room of the complex. They find the back door, but it's a tad too late. As Jake goes to smash the door open, police and SWAT show up to stop him and lock them in. They then get a message alerting them to stay in the building and don't try to leave. Moving further into the night, the vet is still taking care of Fletch and James, and those two are not looking so good right now. Angela starts to interview some of the residents, starting with the child Brianna. She states that she's not feeling too well, and she has a fever. Going back to the vet, he realizes what he thinks this is. Rabies. All victims have the same symptoms as rabid animals, except this is a bit more aggressive and is way faster acting. Shortly after, Dexter's sister and Scott sneak upstairs with Bernard and Sadie, trying to find news on their antenna television. On the way up, they see Randy, a drunk resident trying to go back to his apartment, but they also see a rabid dog in his way. The dog quickly charges Randy and kills him in the elevator. The group continues to find the room and finds the correct channel. The police chief states on the news that everyone is safe and everyone has been evacuated. The group is in disbelief over the lying statement. Suddenly, the power goes out and the infected resident lady attacks our group. Scott quickly hexes her up with his camera. Moments after, our group returns downstairs, and the CDC is officially entering the building to figure out what tarnation is going on. They perform tests on Fletcher and James, while Scott secretly films from a different room. Fletcher and James wake up simultaneously and attack the CDC members. One makes it out alive, but locks the vet inside. Seconds later, the vet dies in the room. The CDC member goes on to tell the group that a sick dog was attacking animals like they've never seen before. The dog's collar led them back to this building. Making the connection between Max being Brianna's dog and her being sick, they just want to make sure she's not infected. Well heck, too late for that, huh? Infected Brianna runs upstairs. Her mom freaks out and gets handcuffed to the staircase. Jake and Danny follow to detain her. The group checks Mrs. Espinosa's room and find her in a closet. Danny turns his head for a quick second and Brianna attacks and bites Danny on the neck. He tells the group to get back downstairs. On the way out, Mrs. Espinosa pops back out, but Jake shuts that down real quick. They get downstairs to find out the building is starting to get overrun with the infected. They quickly run back upstairs and the remaining survivors make it into the room, everyone else dying in the process. The CDC guy reveals he was bitten, and they lock him in a closet? Side little room? I'm not really sure what that is. The group realizes Sadie is bleeding, and Bernard defends her. He loses his mind for a second and tries escaping, only to get shot in the brainium by snipers outside. Jeez, this would be a terrible situation to be in. Yuri, the owner of the building, tells Jake there might be a way out. There's a drain cover in the basement that joins up with the sewers. However, they need the keys from Yuri's apartment to get down there. Suddenly, the infected CDC guy breaks through the glass and kills Yuri. While his wife tries helping, Sadie attacks him from behind. Jake, Angela, and Scott vacate the room. Down to our final three. The three run to the mailboxes to figure out Yuri's apartment number. On the way down, 
They run into a bit of trouble, but Jake once again shuts it down. They finally make it down and figure out Yuri's apartment number. The lady handcuffed to the stairs is back up and ready to attack. They run by to make it to the elevator and ride it on upstairs. Once the door opens, Sadie comes in and attacks Jake. Jake beats her down and Scott helps break her neck. They continue upstairs, tossing an infected over the stair railing and finally getting into Yuri's room. While Angela and Scott find the keys, Jake is fighting off the infected vet. Angela finds the keys and make it back to the front door of the room. Jake prepares them, opens the door, and gets blindsided by an infected Yuri, killing Jake. Angela and Scott, hecked out of luck, realize they need to go up due to the staircase being blocked off by too many infected. They get chased up to the attic, but last second make it in safely. They walk through the room and find out that this was a plot. A terrorist came through, stayed at the complex, and created this disease. A cellar door slams open while they are walking through this pitch black room, and out comes an infected. Scott makes a little too much noise, and the infected kills Scott. Angela finds the camera and uses it to guide herself through the room, but can't help but moan and cry when she sees Scott being eaten. Angela gets attacked, but not killed. She again tries crawling to the camera, but suddenly gets dragged away, ending the film.